Thank you, Gary. Um, later on, you'll tell me who you were talking about. Uh, this is an incredible honor. I want to uh, also welcome my son here, uh, Yoav. Uh, he is not a graduate of, of MBA. Uh, we didn't uh, raise our we raised our family in North Carolina, but it's wonderful. He um, he's about to become a dad for the first time, and, and that's a big big thing in our, in our family. <clears throat> this is an incredible honor. First, it's always, by the way, it's good to see you, Gordon. It really it really is. Uh, um, I feel the warmth of your presence here. Um, this is an honor which really caught me totally by surprise and is one that is historically, as far as MBA is concerned, rather groundbreaking. You see, I do believe that I'm the first Jewish alumnus to receive an award here. Uh, I have a lot of memories of my time at MBA. My fondest memories, actually, I recall today, were with the chorus led by Greg Colson. My classmate Edwin Milam uh, served as the uh, accompanist for, for that. Um, I, I, I just want to mention that, that none of the, these young men bring that back to me, but I also remembered the fact that I probably, because of uh, Greg Colson, he was the uh, choir director at St. George's, I probably know more Christian uh, um, Christmas songs by heart than most rabbis do because of that. Um, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Um, is, I'm glad to see that MBA is uh, continuing with the course. Um, I'm not sure that they were better than us, uh, but I know that when I looked at our course, we had a hell of a lot of fun. It was just wonderful. Uh, I also want to mention here that my education here was outstanding. In my career, I've probably given somewhere around two thousand sermons, written more than 200 articles, and while I did not learn everything here about my writing style, I do believe that a certain amount of the writing style came from MBA, as particularly from the English department and Mrs. Lowry. However, I must admit that being here as a Jewish student was not always good. At the time I went to MBA, I think I was one of the first 10 Jewish students here Wally Kuhn and I were the only Jews in our graduating class. Everyone, when we were here, was very friendly during the week. However, on the weekends, Wally and I were never invited to social events. There were two fraternities here at that time, and none of them had any Jewish members. Unfortunately, there were times when studying in Wallace Hall. This is Wallace, isn't it? It doesn't look like the same. This isn't it. Oh, this is where it was. A oh, blessed memory. Um, I was sitting in a study hall and people were throwing pennies at me. They were throwing pennies at me from behind and urging me, pick up the penny, Jew. There was other anti-Semitic incidents here as well during my time here, but so a few comments are in order. First of all, when it came to avert anti-Semitic acts, uh, Wally's, or for that, that matter, Wally's and my exclusion from weekend social events, most of my fellow classmates were bystanders. No one raised their voice. No one raised their voice to say that social exclusion was not only wrong, but it was also anti-Semitic. The second comment that I'd like to make concerning this is just how far this school has come since I learned here. I spent six or seven hours here yesterday teaching and relating to students and was extraordinarily impressed. I really thank you for that extraordinary opportunity. I'm proud of the fact that when I look at literature from here, I see that, that um, the school, the sports teams, the coaching staff, the cheerleading squad, this is a multiracial school, a multi-ethnic school. And I hope that anti-Semitism and bigotry are much less now at MBA than they were when I was here. And certainly after yesterday, that is my impression. And I have to tell you that walking in here, there were two things that struck me. One is just that uh, this building over here apparently was built in 350 BC, okay? I didn't remember it even being there. And the other thing that quite frankly struck me was this. There was no menorah, Hanukkah menorah, 
candelabra in the school when I was here. There wasn't. And I, I thank you for that. I really do. And I thank you on behalf of all, all of the Jewish kids who, who go here. The irony of all of this is that when I went to MBA, I felt a certain exclusion here at school, but not so much on the outside. And now, in our time, the reverse, Brad, seems to be true. A, a Jewish or a minority student here today will probably feel accepted when this in the school, yet to a certain extent, can feel bigotry outside of these hallowed walls. A year ago, I could have never imagined coming to MBA to make a speech such as this one. And in addition, ago, in addition, a year ago, I could have never thought that in such a speech I would need to share with you, as not only as graduates but as leaders of this community, I needed to share with you just how I am concerned, how much I'm concerned about the increase in anti-Semitism in our society, and in particular, uh, and in general, how much I'm increased, I'm concerned about the increase of bigotry and hate. This is some of the things I shared with the student body yesterday. So specifically, anti-Semitism is on the increase. In 2021, there was a 34% increase, the highest number in the last 50 years. The Jewish population in the United States is only 2.4%, and yet 63% of all religiously oriented hate crimes or violent extremism incidents are against Jews in our country. In addition, there's a lot of online hate, not only in the form of anti-Semitism, but also hatred against minorities, immigrants, Asians, and African Americans, and of course, LGBTQ people. This past few years have been very difficult as far as the Jewish community in uh, the United States is concerned. In 2017, reactionary white nationalists marched in Charlottesville shouting, Jews will not replace us, and the actual part of this is something called the Great Replacement Theory, which says that Jewish people desire to replace white people, particularly white leadership, with black and brown people and immigrants in our country. In 2018, on a, uh, on a Sabbath morning service, I was informed by an usher that there had been a terrible shooting at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Pittsburgh. Eleven Jews at their services would be savagely murdered by that shooting. This past year in Greensboro, North Carolina, where I live, anti-Semitic flyers were thrown on the driveway of residences on a Saturday morning. The flyers accused Jews not only of the great replacement theory, but also of being the cause of COVID. In August and September, as the academic year was beginning in colleges and universities, there were numerous anti-Semitic acts this year, including the egging of Hillel houses in Jewish fraternities and the painting of anti-Semitic graffiti on college campuses. In various places, Jews, particularly Orthodox Jews, have been assaulted. On last uh, Halloween, there were numerous sightings of people who dressed up as Adolf Hitler. And this past Saturday in New York City, two men were arrested. They were carrying a gun, ammunition, an eight-inch knife, knife, and a SWAT sticker armband. According to police, the pair were en route to carry out a massacre at a synagogue. More recent, uh, recently as well, Iranian leaders have blamed the current unrest in their country on Jews. Quite frankly, folks, American Jews do feel threatened right now. We are a community that lost one out of every three Jews in the Nazi Holocaust. Among them were a million and one a million and a half children. For us, anti-Semitism is not a crisis. It is a state of emergency. In our opinion, it's not just a Jewish issue, but it is a sign of societal decay. Recently, Kanye West made anti-Semitic statements and comments about Jews, which unleashed a torrent of anti-Semitism online and in the media. And you might know that Kanye was also promoting Adidas. Well, what happened with Adidas? Adidas had a mo promotional contract with Kanye, and Adidas refused to react. But there was a lot of pressure, including a petition from 20,000 Americans. And during that time, Adidas' stock dropped a precipitous 24%. Eventually, the shoe manufacturer terminated its relationship with Kanye, 
and they announced that they would no longer do business with bigots. But it did not stop there. Brooklyn Nets star Kyrie Irving recommended on Instagram and Twitter to millions of his followers, says something like 21 million followers, that they should view an anti-Semitic movie which, con which contained horrible lies against Jews. According to the film, it was Jews, not Arab or European Christian slavers and slave traders. It was Jews who were responsible for the transatlantic slave trade. And in addition, the film that, that Kyrie Irving recommended asserted that the Nazi Holocaust never happened. Let there be no doubt, my friends. Anyone who denies or distorts what happened during the Nazi Holocaust is guilty of being anti-Semitic. And to make matters worse, Sadly, on Saturday night, what is it, I think two weeks ago, the comedian Dave Chappelle made fun of these anti-Semitic rantings in a way that was offensive to most people of the Jewish community. This is what is going on. Friends, after the Holocaust, the words never again were frequently heard. Today, for American Jews, never is now. And here's where MBA can, and you can come in with a significant role to play. Solidarity and togetherness are of critical importance. Together, together, let us stand against bigotry and hate in all of its forms. You can do this in several ways, but let me give you two examples. First, speak out on your own and call out hate wherever it happens. Do not be afraid to call out hate, particularly those young people back there. Do not be afraid to call out hate online and in the media. And I know it can be awkward when it comes to our friends. My dear friends, this is not an issue of right versus left or left versus right or Democrat versus Republican or Republican versus a Democrat. This, my friends, is an issue of right versus wrong. Second thing you can do is be aware. Committing, combating hate begins with self-awareness, and it begins with love. When confronted with the forces of hate, be prepared to assert yourself in all of your goodness as an ally, and be prepared to push back. We cannot, for the sake of humanity, we cannot remain silent. Edmund Burke's powerful truth has been ringing in my ears throughout this past year. Edmund Burke said, all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. Congressman John Lewis once stated, I believe in freedom of speech, but I also believe that we have an obligation to condemn speech that is racist, bigoted, bigoted anti-Semitic, or hateful. In my opinion, the Holocaust, including Edie Wiesel's book, Night, is an important subject that needs to be taught in high schools. I'm glad that I had an opportunity to share my uh, interpretation of Night with the eighth grade that yesterday that had read the book. Elie Wiesel is a Romanian-born American writer, professor, Nobel laureate, and Holocaust survivor. And one thing that he wrote that is so relevant now is the opposite of love is not hate. It is indifference. Anti-Semitic lies and ranting and the hatred against minorities cannot be left unchallenged. Much of my career has been spent teaching. I've advanced, I've got an advanced degree in uh, education with a specialty in education leadership. I've been involved in curriculum development for more than 40 years. My main area of focus has been Holocaust education. Currently, I'm working with the North Carolina, even though I'm retired, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm working with the North Carolina Holocaust Council in improving Holocaust-oriented curriculum in our high schools. This summer, I will be taking 40 public and private school teachers to Poland to learn about the Holocaust and improve their own personal curriculum. And I'm hoping, as we talked yesterday, to take one or two teachers from MBA. Yesterday was quite a day for me. I had the real privilege of speaking with and teaching boys here for six or seven hours. Uh, they went, uh, 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 I think Lee asked me, what do, what do you need to teach six or seven hours? And I said, a bathroom, lunch, and diet Dr. Pepper. It was great, though. 
because it was an opportunity for me to get to know the school as it is today, as it is today. The theme in everything that I did, everything that I did was the need to become an upstander and not be a bystander. I gave several examples of people who had chosen not to be bystanders during the Holocaust. I encouraged, I encouraged the students to take the inspiration of such people, be they Jews or non-Jews, and become upstanders. The Jewish people are really quite bound by tradition, as is this school. Every year for more than 2,000 years on Passover, the date of the liberation of the ancient Israelites from Egypt, we hold a Passover meal called a Seder. I mention this because someone once asked me why we Jews continue to talk about what happened during the Nazi Holocaust. His point was, we should forget about it, you Jews should forget about it, and move on. I was kind of struck by what was being said to me, and my answer came out in the following way. I said, 3,000 plus years ago, a wicked Pharaoh tried to kill our sons. <laughs> we haven't forgot that yet. What makes you think that after 80 years, 80 years since Jews were slaughtered in gas chambers, that we for good just simply forget that and move on. Now, I mentioned this because there is a similar deeply held, but not as old, tradition here at MBA. It is the tradition of gentleman, scholar, and athlete. Now I doubt that such a tradition will ever be changed. Nevertheless, in my mind, I undertook a strictly intellectual exercise. And I'd like to say that as a result of that exercise, I thought that two words ought to be added to gentleman, scholar, and athlete. The first is kind. I want the graduates of this school to come out with a sense that they must be kind and they must be compassionate to all human beings to all. I believe that, I truly believe that when we are compassionate to one another, we are bringing more of God's presence into our midst. And the second word that I'd want added to this in my mind, of course it'll never happen, but that's okay, would be the word upstander. Gentleman, scholar, athlete, kind, Upstander. We've seen that hateful and ignorant words can lead to violence, especially when good people do not use their voices to push back. It's all on us, all of us, to be part of the solution. I'd like to once again stress that I could have never imagined a year ago receiving such a prestigious award, but more than that, I could have not imagined that in doing so there would be such an urgent need to speak out specifically against anti-Semitism in particular and bigotry in general. I'd like to once again thank you for this incredible honor and also to thank you for listening to me. All of these years, it's wonder, after all these years, it's such a wonderful experience to come back to the school and to see not only how much it's grown in terms of the buildings on campus, but how much this school has grown in terms of character, how much this school has grown in terms of diversity, how much it's grown in terms of inclusion, how much it's grown to dedication to the arts, but above all, how much it has grown in terms of being committed to caring, to creating students who are not afraid to stand up and to let their voices be heard when confronting bias, bigotry, racism, anti-Semitism, homophobia, hate in any form. So I'd like to thank you, Brad. And I'd like to thank the school and all those who chose me for this award. And I hope that my frank and sincere words will be appreciated. It's my hope that Montgomery Bell Academy will continue to flourish and continue not only to educate young men who attend here, but through them, through them to create future leaders, leaders who are dedicated to excellence, leaders who are dedicated to compassion, and leaders who are dedicated to justice.
As we approach Thanksgiving tomorrow, I'm, I'm hoping that we'll all be blessed with a holiday of peace, love, compassion, and understanding. I hope that God will help us to understand that Thanksgiving is not only about being grateful, giving thanks, but also about giving to those who are less fortunate, those who are in need. Once again, my dear friends, thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for this incredible honor.